Welcome back to the lab, welcome back to EE for everyone. I'm really excited for the video today because we are going to be talking through, well, this isn't really a design, this isn't really a project, this is just... Talking through some of what we've been kind of preaching to you about op amps and output capacitance and actually capacitive loading of an op amp circuit. And here we have two seemingly ideal implementations of an OP07 two times amplification circuit. One of them comes through uh, nothing, basically. One of them is just op amp to load. In this case, we've got capacitive loads that we can switch in, then monitor the output, as well as a BJT buffer that is on the output of an OP07, which then drives the load a little bit. I think these are two 0.1 ohm resistors. We have the oscilloscope set up with channel one connected to the output on the channel that does not have the BJT buffer. Actually, you know what? I think I need a third channel. Right, so channel one is the unbuffered output. Channel three is the buffered output and channel two is the input yeah that doesn't make any sense <laughs> okay okay channel one is the input channel two is the unbuffered output channel three is the buffered output that makes way more sense right on let's make sure these are all dc coupled great no bandwidth limit okay let's first of all power on the board make sure she doesn't explode hey that's an amp going through the board don't oh. mm -hmm. Don't confuse your positive and negative. Better yet, don't use wires that are blue and green. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that didn't blow anything up. <laughs> if it did, we've got a spare board. <sighs> Let's start with DC then. I'm setting the scaling on the outputs to twice as large as the input. So if they look the same, that means it's working correctly. Great. You can see this is buffering, amplifying. Both channels look ideal. Well, what happens if we, just for the sake of getting this thing to trigger, let's add a little sine wave. So now I can, boom, trigger on that waveform. The sine wave isn't the point of what we're doing here. It does look beautiful, which is great, but it's not really the point. Let's load these op amps. I'm going to start with a 0.1 microfarad load on the unbuffered op amp. Hmm. And just as I did that, channel 2 starts to look a little funky. Okay. Channel 2 looks weird. How about channel 3? What happens if we load this one? Okay. Now, let's take a look. We see a very similar distortion on channel 2 and channel 3. A part of this could be offset Part of this could be frequency. Let's make sure we're giving these a fighting chance. Okay. So now, channel two is looking a lot better now that we slowed it down. Channel three, still looking pretty weird. Let's decrease the output amplitude. Interesting distortion starting to pop out, but Again, nothing super crazy or out of the ordinary. Let's go for the 10K, or sorry, the 10 mic. OK, 
okay, you can see this has become a triangular waveform on the output of our op amp. And this op amp is handling this very gracefully, very gracefully. Let's do the same on the other one. And look, with 10 mic, channel three, it's still going. How about 20 mic? And we're actually pulling current now, mind. Those transistors are heating up. We are pulling about seven milliamps now, driving this waveform. Okay, so this op amp is actually pretty fantastic. I should have used a cheaper, crappier op amp because what's happening here is quite simple. This circuit is still stable, but what can happen when you capacitively load an op amp, this is just output current, basically, right? It's trying to drive, but it's limited by what the op amp's able to do. So you can see we have a triangular waveform on one and actually something that looks kind of like a sinusoid on the other one. That is incredible. What does this tell me? This tells me that if we want to put a simple BJT buffer with a 3904 and a 3906, on our electronic load project, we can expect to have stable operation with a heckin' lot of output capacitance. We are driving 20 microfarads of output capacitance right now. And this thing's behaving reasonably. It's behaving reasonably. Um, but what will happen is if I come into the frequency and I slow this thing down, I'm gonna put this right now uh, I want to put it in, no, I want to put it in auto trigger. And what I want to do is really slow down. I'm going to slow down this waveform to the point where it looks like DC. All right, so we're at two hertz. I need to look at the data sheet of the SOPO7 closer because the fact that we can directly drive a ton of output capacitance without any issues. Man, I've seen instability with like a microfarad, let alone 10. Yeah, so we can see how these two track with each other. They look, I mean, that's just the scope sampling. They are locked in step until we get to the maximum. And you can see that channel three, which is buffered, can't achieve the same output voltage. There's a 0.7 volt, one diode drop of additional output range loss. But overall, wow, there it is. Now, if that is not a beautiful picture of what this buffer does, I don't know what is. Channel 2 is the unbuffered version. Channel 3 is the buffered version. And you can see that our BJT buffer is just slamming that 20 microfarad output capacitance around. It has absolutely no respect for that output capacitance it is doing a great job. Whereas the maximum output current of our OPO7 is slowly pulling the output. This is the best case scenario for a capacitively loaded op amp. You better hope that if you put this much output capacitance on your op amp, that it is reasonable and stable. It could be oscillating wildly right now. See how as we change the load, the behavior changes significantly. And then on the other one, you can't, like, I'm sure it's a little faster, but you can't really tell. What you notice more is the power consumption <laughs> rather than the output waveform. <laughs> that is fantastic. Look at that. I can hear 
I can... He Whoo! Okay, yep. Our transistor starting to get toasty. It's 700 hertz. Our NPN transistor on the high side is starting to get a little toasty there. Must have been burning most of the power. We really need to get a thermal camera in the lab. We really, really do. What this hop amp allows us to do, and I've never actually really done a design that took advantage of this, it allows us to null off some error that is present in the op amp. That is imperfections in the factory calibration of one of these devices. In this case, we can actually compensate for it because we've got the trim pots, but usually for my designs, it's more trouble than it's worth. Right on, 2.6 volt input. Assuming that our multimeter is perfect, 2.68 volts times two. So we should expect to see 5.36 volts on the output. Let's check our two op amps. We're seeing 5.3 and we're seeing four, sorry, 5.36. Why is that? Well, because we didn't trim in our potentiometers to exactly 5K. So I'm going to spin this. We're going for 5 5.3. 5 5.3. 6. Come on now, you let go of the trim pot. All right, that's really, really close. All right, 5.36. Let's check the input again to so make sure it's still 2.68. Of course it's not. Two point six eight four. Two point six eight four. Three five point three six eight. Five point three six. Okay, close enough. Let's go to the other one. 5.368 is what we're shooting for. 5.368. Boom. There you go. That is the purpose of the offset pins. It is to eliminate offset error on the inputs of these op amps. Now, how good were these before we trimmed them? Why do you gotta ask me hard questions, guys? How bad was it before we compensated the op amp? Well, the DC input voltage is still right around the same, 2.68. Now the resistors are a little cold, so it's a little different. 2.688. Times two, we'd expect to see 5.376 volts out. What do we see in the uncompensated one? We see. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, what? Yeah, move the wrong clip. Okay, what do we see? We see 5.382. Okay, three millivolts of input. Wait, no. 3 millivolts of error. <laughs> That's what we just compensated for. <laughs> and now in theory, if that trim pot is worth its weight in anything, we'll see about a 3 millivolt difference between the compensated and uncompensated op amp. What are we seeing here? We're seeing about 17 millivolts of difference. All right. What are we measuring here? 5.369. Yeah, this one's worse. And see, this is why I 
5.368 versus 5.385. And 5.385 is much, 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 much closer to what we would expect. So this is why I never actually implemented this trim functionality because they gave you an excellent tool. They gave you an excellent way to really dial in your op amp to make it have absolutely zero input offset error. But at the same time, if you use that feature, now you've just given yourself the ability to throw your op amp out of Cal. <laughs> if you use, in this case, a cheap China special trim pot that isn't very good, that has some backlash in the screw or some ability to have vibration knock it around, well, now you've just added a variable that could make your circuit stop working as expected. And for me, every time we've used this op amp so far, it has been much more valuable to make sure that we have consistent performance that aligns with the datasheet ratings rather than getting absolutely zero input offset error. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that you enjoyed watching it for everyone today, uh, but more than anything else, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Just wanna say a special thank you to our Patreon members. Thank you for throwing a few bucks in the hat to make awesome projects like this one possible. And uh, yeah, can't wait for the next one. This was a little quick one day build, just meant to really explore the BJT buffer. And man, being totally honest with you, we already spun that, spun that board and I didn't put this BJT buffer on it. And I am wishing that we had because this thing is awesome. Totally worth it if you've got the volt or so to spare on your output range. All right. Well, that's about enough rambling for one day. I'm going to send this off. So we'll see you in the next one. Uh, stay tuned for our future videos where... Man, I don't even know. We've got so much exciting stuff happening. We've got the Class AB amplifier series. We've got the Ampere Community Edition. We've got some other fun projects coming. We've got all kinds of good stuff. So make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss it. All right, see you in the next one. Bye.